Hello, in this video we are going to um, do a design example for a common source amplifier. Um, I have drawn my circuit, notice that I have my common source uh, amplifier comprising a transistor M1 and M1 transistor, um, a biasing network for resistor biasing network, notice that I also have a source regeneration resistor in there, um, and then I have two coupling capacitors at the input and at the output. Uh, assuming this is going to be a discrete transistor amplifier um, where I don't want my um, input signal to interfere with the DC bias point of my amplifier. That's why I'm coupling my signal in through a coupling capacitor so that the, the DC point will be, uh, won't be altered. And then as well, I am assuming that I want my output signal without any DC component. And so I'm running it through a, a coupling capacitor at the output to filter out any DC components. And uh, I have my MOSFET parameters. I'm actually going to simplify this a little bit by just saying uh, my whole MOSFET parameter, Qn, which is mu and C oxide width over length, is equal to 130 milliamps per volt squared. My threshold voltage is going to be 2 volts. I'm going to ignore channel length modulation effects by assuming my lambda is equal to 0. And these are my design specs. I am to run this from a single supply uh, of 20 volts with a biasing current of 2 milliamps. My voltage gain, assuming no load connected, at the output is negative 10 volts per volt. I want an input resistance greater than or equal to 400 kilo ohms, an output resistance less than or equal to 5 kilo ohms. Um, a peak to peak uh, output voltage swing of 6 volts, and so plus minus 3 volts around a central. Um, voltage and um, a, my input signal frequency I expect for my signals of interest is going to be greater than or equal to one kilohertz and um, that piece of information is going to help me decide what are the right values for my CC1 and CC2 capacitors. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first step always when we are designing an amplifier circuit is to set the DC bias point. So that's what we're going to do. So step number one, I'm going to set my DC bias point. Um, first thing, I'm going to uh, choose my, I want to say set, because that maybe implies um, selecting components, but I'm going to select a value for uh, my drain current. In this case, I am giving a value for it, 2 milliamps, but I'm, I not always will be, and so I will have to uh, make a selection. In this case, since I'm um, given 2 milliamps, that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, then I'm going to need to find the right value of VGS in order to set the drain current. As we know, the drain current is related to VGS uh, through the quadratic equation. And so I'm going to find VGS um, based on the following um, equation that ID is equal to one half KN times um, PGS minus VT squared. And I'm going to be using uh, DC nomenclature because I'm dealing with the DC biasing uh, circuit now. So VGS minus VT squared. So I can start substituting values. Uh, this is going to be 2 milli is equal to one half times 130 milli PGS minus 2 squared. Okay. If I want to simplify a little bit, I can drop the millis since the have a times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied on both sides. So I can drop it. In essence, just have my equation look like this. And since this is a quadratic equation, I'm going to get two possible values um, for my VGS, one of them is that VGS is equal to negative, I'm sorry, 1.88 volts, and the other is that it is equal to 2.12 volts. Now, I know that the first case is not going to be the right answer because um, it is lower than my threshold voltage. And so if I apply, if I apply um, um, that VGS, then I'm, uh, I, 
I can't have a VDS that is lower than my VT, otherwise my transistor will be in cutoff, so I'm going to say this is less than VT. And so this is the right solution in this particular case. And then now I'm going to select my RD and RS resistors so that I partition my available supply voltage, which is 20 volts, between RD, RS, and my transistor M1. Keeping in mind, I want M1 to be out of saturation, uh, for which my VDS needs to be greater than VDS minus VT, or the overdrive voltage. So, I'm gonna... Next step, select RD and RS. Repartition, available supply. I know my supply voltage, VDD, is going to be uh, divided between RD, the transistor M1, VDS, and RS. And so I will want uh, my VDS to be greater than VGS minus VT. And I can see since my VGS is 2.12 volts and my VT is 2 volts, um, that, you know, that it just means that VDS needs to be greater than 0.12 volts. So it, it's not a, a very um, constrained requirement. Um, but I do need to keep in mind that I have um, a specification for a peak-to-peak output voltage of 6 volts. Uh, so that means my uh, drain voltage needs to be at least 3 volts below uh, my supply voltage VDD. Typically a little bit better than that, you don't want to just drive it all the way to the edge. Um, but basically it just means the higher um, that my drain voltage can be is uh, uh, 3 volts below VDD or 17 volts. Okay, and so that's going to give me that the minimum voltage that I can um, associate with resistor RD is 3 volts in order to have that 6 volts peak to peak swing or plus minus 3 volts uh, voltage swing at the output. I'm actually going to go ahead and give it uh, 10 volts. And so I'm going to do, uh, for example, I'm going to say VOD is equal to 10 volts, VDS is equal to 8 volts, so that it allows for that output voltage to swing in the negative direction without my transistor going into saturation, and VRS will just be 2 volts. And so uh, that meets that requirement that VDD is equal to the sum of those three. Um, so I'm going to make a note here. Um, I need 6 volts peak to peak, output voltage swing, and um, I need VDS being greater than, um, or VDS, excuse me, being greater than VDS minus VT. Okay, so those are my requirements here. So I can go ahead now and calculate my uh, resistor values. Since I want VRD to be 10 volts and I have a current of 2 milliamps flowing through it, I have it RD is equal to 10 volts divided by 2 milliamps or 5 kilo ohms. My RS uh, will be 2 volts divided by 2 milliamps or 1 kilo ohm and I can enter those values 5 kilo ohms for the 1 kilo ohm for RS and then the last step in order to set my DC bias points is going to be the selection of resistors R1 and R2 And the, the main goal here is to set the right value of uh, VG, the gate voltage. Notice that the gate voltage is the result of voltage division between R1 and R2, since in a MOSFET we truly have no current going into the gate of a transistor. 
So I'm selecting R1 and R2 to set VG. And VG needs to be equal to, remember that we need to have a certain VGS of 2.12 volts in order to make the current equal to 2 milliamps. And so I want my gate voltage to be equal to my source voltage plus that VGS voltage. So VG needs to be equal to uh, VRS, or VS I should say, the voltage at the source, they're the same thing, but VS plus VGS, which is equal to um, VS is 2 volts, um, as we designed in the previous step, and VGS is 2.12 volts. So 4.12 volts for VG. And so I have yep. my <clears throat> R1 over R2. It's equal to the ratio of the voltage across R1 divided by the voltage across R2, which is VDD minus VD divided by VG minus C. Or 20 minus 4.12 divided by 4.12 which is 15.88 divided by 4.5 or 385. And again, there are multiple um, values of R1 and R2 that are going to meet that the specification. Uh, we, want, we want to choose high enough values that uh, we won't have an outrageously large current flowing through R1 and R2. Um, and so we don't want necessarily resistors in the ohm or 100 of ohm range, but rather in the high kilo ohm or even mega ohm range. Uh, but notice that there is a specification that we want our R in um, to be greater than or equal to 400 kilo ohms. Now we know that the R in looking just at the MOSFET is equal to infinity. Uh, but now that we have added R1 and R2 to our circuit as a biasing network, our R in looking into, uh, into the input of the amplifier, if I draw my AC equivalent circuit, uh, my TC1 capacitor will be shorted for the AC equivalent because I'm assuming that we've selected a capacitor value so that we are allowing through uh, the signals in the frequency of interest. And uh, so I will see R1 going to essentially a DC source, which is um, a ground for AC purposes and um, R2 going to ground. And so R1 in parallel with R2, in parallel with the resistance looking into the gate of the transistor, which is infinity. And therefore, simply R1 in parallel with R2. So something to note here is that I want R in equals R1 in parallel with R2 to be greater than or equal to 400 kilo ohms. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose my R1 it's being equal to, or my R2 rather, which is the smallest of the two. To be equal to 1 mega ohm, and then R1 will be 3.85 times that, or 3.85 mega ohms. Could you have chosen something lower? Um, Sure you could, and you will still be meeting the specification. Um, there's you know, a number of values, there's a range of values. Normally, if you're building a discrete circuit, uh, you will be getting your values to be as close as possible to some uh, standard value, so that you don't have to be um, combining resistors in series and parallel to come up with those specific resistor values. Um, but this seems like as good a choice as any. It does not um, it, it will ensure that we don't have an outrageous amount of current and thus um, a large amount of power dissipation flowing through R1 and R2, as well as will meet our input resistance requirements. Uh, so that's it. This will be 1 mega ohm, 3.85 mega ohms. And uh, we have completed the DC um, biasing portion of our uh, circuit. Thank you.